All right, so in this video, we're going to be talking about grid controls primarily, um, snap grid, edit grid, and some extras to pretty much close off your learning about Tinkercad and the main basics and a few advanced techniques as well. So first and foremost, whenever I give you a project, I'll usually give you some kind of parameters, how big or how small it can be. So in order to change those, let's say we're making a project and it can only be 2 inches by 2 inches. So that's the max size you can make it. An easy way to make sure you don't go over that, I mean, yes, you could click an object, drag it in, and resize it, make it precise. But to make it a little bit easier, we go over to this little tab down here on the bottom right that says Edit Grid. Click on it, Grid Properties shows up. So right now we have a few different things that we're looking at. We have our units, presets, width and height, and of course cancel and update grid. First we're going to focus on units. Right now it's in metric, so it's talking about millimeters. We don't exactly want to be doing that because, I mean, yes you could, but you're probably not as familiar with the metric measurement as a few others are out there or just in general. So we're going to click and change that to inches. Presets, we don't normally change this, but if you have one specific type of printer, like a MakerBot or a Dremel or something, you could click on one of these down here and it will make your printing work plane size a certain size, but we're just going to ignore that for the time being. Width, we're going to change that to 2. Height will be 2 as well, since like I said, our example is 2 inches by 2 inches. Click Update Grid. Now you'll notice everything got a lot smaller. There's a bunch of different lines on here and blocks. They are important, so keep this in mind. One of these big blocks that you can kind of see as the highlighted area here basically stands for one inch. All these tiny blocks, if we count them out, there's one, two, three, four, the whole way up to eight. There's eight little increments, or it's basically divided up into an eighth of an inch. So there's eight eighths in an inch. So we're here, we have 16 eighths going across this way, and the same that way in two inches, two inches. All right, so now this is basically our parameter, and we cannot go any larger than this. So if you click and drag an object in there, you realize, whoa, that's almost the exact, exactly too big or too small. All right, so now something else that's really important to keep in mind. When we want to maybe move an object, watch very closely what happens at the edge of the object in these blocks. If we use the arrow keys, you'll notice it moves one of those blocks at a time. That's because our snap grid is set to one eighth of an inch, or moves one of those eight blocks at a time. Down here at the very bottom, in order to change that, you click on this. If you want to maybe make it move two blocks or even more at a time, you go at a larger measurement, so an eighth of an inch is smaller. Smaller is near the top, larger is at the bottom. Click on quarter inch, it should move two boxes at a time, just like that. If we want to move it so it's a smaller increment, you go the exact opposite direction. So this will really come in handy when you're trying to finally position or put something in one specific spot. We're going to click on 1 32nd, and if you can see very closely, it moves 1 32nd of an inch at a time, very slowly. Makes precision a lot easier when you're trying to place something. The other thing you can do is you can turn your snap off completely. If we turn it off, one thing happens, we cannot use our arrow keys anymore because there's no increments. But if we move it, now basically we have all these freedoms, or all this freedom, and it doesn't snap to one specific spot. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, we're going to get into some fun things within Tinkercad. So over here on the right side, this is a whole world that I haven't shown you yet, but I think it's important that you know this is out there. Click on Basic Shapes and get that drop-down menu to out. We have extras, we have simple symbols and stuff like that, we have eggs, there's a whole chicken foot. I would suggest for your project, please don't use a chicken foot, it's way too brittle and small, make your own. Connectors, symbols, shapes, all these things pop up. But the fun part of it is, if you go down to the very bottom where it says Community Shape Generator, all these things come up that people like you and I have created, uploaded into Tinkercad, and Tinkercad has basically used them as kind of like a resource. So it takes a few seconds for these to load up, but give it some time. But like I said, this is a whole different world of things that we can get into. So, oh, there it is. All right, now if you go down through and take a look, now we have all these different shapes and objects that we can use for our project. Some of them we can use, some of them obviously are a little bit too fancy and we cannot use. So let's just grab one out here. So we have a spruce tree here. If we grab that and place it, grab it. 
place it. Looks like it's being a little slow on me here. It should place it right in spot like that, or maybe it's not going to work. I don't know. Prove me wrong. All right, there we go. Now we're talking. We just place our object. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Just like that. And that works with the majority of all your project pieces. Just like that. Now, for some of these things, you have to use your mind and think if it's too complex for a 3D printer to use. Like, somewhere on here, there's a strand of DNA, like a DNA strand. That would be a little bit too complex for us to use. I cannot, I'm not sure if I'm able to find it right now, but now I'm not seeing it. So it's somewhere in here. But some of these objects we can use because they're simple. Like this right here, this 2D star. That's perfectly acceptable to find because it's not too complicated. It's pretty simple. But if we try to do something that was really difficult or something just out of this world, like whatever this thing is here, that would be a little bit more complex. I would not say that would be appropriate for your project. So please steer away from those things that are a little bit too complex for our uses. Okay? But like I said, this opens up a whole new world of things you can get into. So Community Shape Generator and also Featured. Um, the Featured is just basically the ones that Tinkercad picks that they think are really like the hot topic and ones that they think a lot of people would like to use. It's kind of like the display case in a way. One other cool one that I like to play around with, let's get clear this out, like so. You also have the U.S. States, which is pretty cool. So if you click on this, right now we have the shape of New York. Wow, that's pretty cool. Click and scroll down, we can find Pennsylvania. Let's see, alphabetical order. Right there's the shape of Pennsylvania. So there's all these really cool little features within Tinkercad, but it's up to you to do some exploring. The one thing I would like to promote and just say with Tinkercad, now of course the more that you use it, the better you get with it, but just experiment. Play around with stuff, see what you can do. Um, the best discoveries in this world, it doesn't matter if it's 3D modeling or whatever, have basically been discovered just by experimenting with things. So just placing stuff in there, seeing what it does, playing around with it, you can change the whole characteristics of just about anything. So it's really cool. So hopefully by these tutorial videos you're able to have a basic understanding of how to use Tinkercad. You feel as though you're really confident and you can be proficient in the uses and when it comes to making something from scratch you'll have a better idea of where to start and how to do it.